Thank you for tuning in with us. Thank you for being here in the house. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, 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 oh,
something that someone needs today to say. Say, take all of me. You're all forget that and we forget that we are sons and daughters of an almighty king and we forget that we have victory and power in everywhere we go and sometimes life does not remind us that we have that power and that victory but we need to speak to ourselves and say I'm yours forever because you are faithful to me because you love me you never leave me because you loved me even when I wasn't worthy you still loved me that's the kind of faith we need that's the kind of faith we need one more time before we switch everybody put their hands up say take all of me you're
that seed of faith to move mountains. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. I said it takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. What if we believe? I'm starting to believe. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. Do you believe that this morning? Come on, see, I say, take the mustard. Take the mustard seed of faith. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. Come on, take it up, say, what if we believe? I'm sorry.
because your name is power, your name is healing. Oh, 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 what if we believed it all? Oh, 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 what if we believed it all? Oh, oh, what if we believed it oh, 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 what if we believed, my singer say, oh, 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 what if we believed it oh, 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 what if we believed it oh. Oh, oh, what if we believed in hope? Oh, oh, what if we believed in Come on, lift your hands right there where you are. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Come on, do you believe it today? Do you believe it? Come on, open up your voice and tell them, Lord, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Hey, I believe. Come on, come on. Does anybody believe in here? Tell them, Lord, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Help my unbelief. Help me. Help me. Help us. Help us. But we believe. We believe. We believe in you. We believe you can do it. You're the chain breaker. You're the chain breaker. Does anybody believe? Does anybody believe? He's breaking chains right now. I said the King of Glory is breaking chains right now. I said the King of Kings is breaking chains right now. Right now. Maybe you're watching me online. He's breaking chains now. The King of Glory. Is breaking chains now. We declare you free. We declare you free. I declare you free. I declare you free. Be free. Be liberated. Be free. Be free from your bondage. Be free from that habit. Be free from that addiction. Can we... Can we just say that one part? It takes a mustard seed. Of... Come on, lift your hands and say that with us. Everybody, lift your hands. It takes a mustard seed of faith. Come on, that's all you need. A mustard seed is very small seed, but when it grows, it becomes the biggest. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. Come on, say that with us. All it takes. All it takes. Mustard seed of faith. Come on, to two move mountains. mountains. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. It takes 
It takes, it takes, takes a mustard seed of faith. Come on, let me hear you, church. Oh, yeah. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. It takes a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. And all we need to do is believe, 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 believe. Lord, we believe you today. We believe that you are who you say you are. We, we believe you to be the king of glory. We believe that you are high and exalted. Lord, you are lifted up. You are higher than anything in this world. There's nothing higher than you, God. There's nothing greater than you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you are doing, what you are ministering to us. We say to you, King of glory, have your way in our midst. We say to you, King of glory, do what you do best in our midst. We say, King of glory, we say bring in into your inheritance. We call in, call in your inheritance. Lord, those that don't know you today, we. We, we give you honor, we give you glory, we give you praise today. And we thank you for who you are. You are the king of glory. You are the king of glory. Come on, lift your hands one more time and tell them, he is the king of glory. He is a mighty God. He is the omnipotent God. He has all power and all might. He says, all authority has been given unto me. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. There is no other like our God. There is no other like him. There is no other like him. And Lord, we declare your goodness we declare your faithfulness, Lord, in our lives, in this place. And we thank you for this gathering, this time together, Lord, that we could come, Lord, as a body, Lord, and give you honor and give you glory. Now, Father, we ask that you would continue, Lord, Lord, to have your way supernaturally, Father, supernaturally move, supernaturally touch, supernaturally heal, God. Thank you for delivering, God. Thank you for breaking in. Thank you for breaking through. You are the God of breakthrough. You are the God of breakthrough. And we thank you for breaking through. Lord, breaking in, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for breaking into our situation, God. Lord, where it may seem difficult and hard for us, but Lord, it's nothing for you. It's nothing for you. And Lord, we lay down, we surrender, we surrender, we surrender everything to you. And we say, have your way, King of glory. We say, have your way, King of glory. Have your way, Lord, in our hearts, Lord, in our lives. Have your way today, Lord, in the hearts and lives of your people. We thank you that you are a deliverer. We thank you that you are our healer. And we give you honor and praise. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Would you just turn around to somebody and give them a distant high five. Just shoo, there you go. Ain't got to touch nobody. Just give them a distant high five. And tell them God is good. God is good. Well, we welcome you, those that are online. God bless you. We're glad you tuned in. We are so thankful that uh, you will tune in with us today. Uh, God is good. God is on his throne. And we are so honored to have the King of Glory come into this place. Come and touch us. Come and heal us. Come and encourage us. The king of glory 
come in and, and reside and dwell among us. Because if anyone we need, we need Jesus. Tell the person next to you, it ain't about you, it's about Jesus. Come on, it's about Jesus. Come on, we've got to exalt Jesus. We've got to lift up Jesus. We've got to stop lifting up the conditions and the situations that's in the world. And we've got to lift up Jesus. He, we've got to exalt Jesus. How many of you say amen? amen. We've got we've to put Jesus in our heart and on our lips, amen. It's about Jesus. And can I tell you something? Jesus is here to uh, set you free. Jesus is here to liberate you. Jesus is here to rescue you. He's here to deliver you. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love who you are. We love your presence. Lord, we, we want you to have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. We just, we yield to you. We yield to what you want to do. We yield to what you want to do with us today. What you want to say, what you want to speak, Lord, to us today. We, we just love you. Come on, folks, lift your hand one more time. I just feel the presence of God. I want to shift, but I can't. Come on, lift him in. And right there where you are, I just want you to begin to just thank him. Tell him, Lord, thank you for your presence. If you're at home and you're watching online, begin to say, Lord, thank you. I just believe that the Lord wants us to go a little deeper. Uh, we want, he wants to draw us in a little deeper. Come on. Come on. Just begin to tell him, Lord, come on. Come on. Press in. Let's go into another level, into a deeper level. Come on. Let's, let's just turn this place right now for a few moments into a place of intercession. Come on. Begin to just pray. Come on. I feel something. I, mean, I feel like the Lord just wants us to go deeper. I feel like the Lord is saying, go deeper. Press in. Press in. Press in. There there's more to what I want to do with you. There's more to what I want to say to you. There's more to what I want to do with you. Come on, let's just press in a little bit more. Let him know that he is, Jesus is everything to you. Hallelujah. If you're at home, come on, tell him, Jesus, it's you I need. Jesus, I need the king, the judge, the priest, hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, you serve a big God, you serve a God that's alive, amen, hallelujah, it's not a circumstance or a situation that you're going through that he is not able to intervene or to, to move into, well, Father, we love you, thank you. We thank you. You know, you online, just tell them thank you. Thank you for your presence. <clears throat> thank you for your presence. You know, if any time we need an, an, a, a release of God's grace, a greater release, it's today, amen. It's in these days that we're living in. Because if you're not careful, you've watched the news and, and they'll continue to tell you things are going up, cases are going up. But I'm reminded that the Bible says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Amen. Grace is increasing. So no matter what's going on in the world, we've got to keep our eye on Jesus. We've got to keep our hearts affectionate toward him. Amen. We've got to keep our hearts affectionate toward him. Amen. Well, let me quickly, I have a few announcements that I want to remind you of. Midweek service on Wednesday nights. At 7 p.m., it's been really good. This past uh, Wednesday, my wife shared, and it was a blessing, and we thank God for it. We appreciate you guys online tuning in. Thank you uh, for tuning in. Uh, thank you for watching. We pray, we're always praying that God will continue to be, just be a blessing as we come on to share his word. We never take that lightly. We see it an honor and a privilege to be able to share the word of God. I want to also remind you, starting next week, say next week, we go to two services. Starts July 5th. Right after the 4th of July, we will have our, our Sunday service. Our first service starts at 10 a.m. 
to 11.30 a.m. And then our second service will be from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Now, we've added another service because the, uh, uh, July 5th opens up everything where we're now able to allow children to come in. Of course, we will not, uh, we will be restraining from children's church and nursery until uh, I further notice and let you guys know. But children will be able to come. And of course, if parents, if your children are out of control, or we understand sometimes they get a little uh, uh, uneasy uh, while they're being in service, uh, we will prepare a room for you so that only the moms or if there's a dad with their child, they'll be able to take them uh, back there and, uh, and, and, and just deal with them or, or just uh, monitor them. So again, we will also be on live for both services. We're going to attempt both services. But again, Grace City has two services coming on. And so we want you to decide on uh, what service you would like. We're going to work. We're making sure that we get you out of here uh, at a proper time. We're also going to be taking care uh, in between the services, the first and second service. We will be cleaning. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure it's safe and that it's sanitized so that the second service come in, they can have that freedom and know that we are taking care of them. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. We felt we need to do that, especially now that we're going to be adding children. A lot of our families that are not here as a result of children. But now that we're going to be opening up to children, uh, we're going to be packing it out. So we will be having a second service, and we would love for you to come. Come on out, be a part of what God is doing in Grace City. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How, many, how many are glad to be saved? Amen. Amen. God is good. Uh, other than that, oh, I want to also remind you of our, uh, our, our um, life groups that are online. You want to be a part of a life group. Listen, we've got folks from other states on, uh, on our life groups, and we would love for you, if you uh, want to be discipled, if you want to be, uh, be connected, because a lot of times people are saying, you know what, Pastor, I don't feel connected. I want to be uh, more connected to the church. And, and we want you to. One way of doing it is being part of our life groups. We've got, I believe, four life groups going forth. Uh, you can find out more information on that. You can see uh, me after service, and I can let you know, connect you with my son, and then he can let you know what you need to do. I believe you can go online, too, and sign up, and uh, that is another way of being part of it. But we believe in uh, discipling um, in fact, we want to get back into that place of discipling, even in the, in the building that we're here. Uh, it's just been trying to get everything back in order, and, 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 and it's happening for us. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. All right, I believe that is it. How many are ready to give today? How many, how many are ready to give to the Lord? Amen. You know, the Bible teaches that it is a blessing to give. I want to share a scripture with you. Um, and it's out of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. And how many know you, you, you'd fare well if you simply just took advice uh, that the Bible gives? Amen. Amen. Right? I want you to open up your Bible. Let's quickly, I haven't shared a scripture in a while, so I want to just share something I thought was pretty cool. Um, Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, chapter 8. Let's just go there. Uh, whether you're on your phone device, that's fine too. But I just want to show you something because there's a, there's a, uh, a promise or a blessing in obedience. Amen. How many can say amen? amen? Come on now, listen to me. I don't care how long you've been around. I don't care how old you are. You never get too old for wisdom. Amen. You never get too old to learn and get receive more knowledge and I don't know about you but I I, I want more knowledge of the scripture amen because I want I, I want to take and see what God has promised me and it become a part of me amen but uh, Proverbs 8 and look look what it says in verse 15 let's just go there now this is a chapter on wisdom and if I was to kind of put a name before this chapter uh, Romans 8, uh, I would call it the excellence of wisdom. The excellence of wisdom. But notice what it says in verse 15. 
wisdom is, it says, by me kings reign. That is, by wisdom kings reign and rulers decree justice. Verse 16, by me princes rules and nobles, all the judges of the earth. And then verse 17 says this. This is what wisdom says. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Are you here? Did you hear that? Let's, let's just read that again, verse 17. It says, I love those. And it just didn't say it's a good thing that you, you know, you seek me and find. He says, no, there, there's, a, there's a level of connection with you and I that others don't get. Are you here? There, there's this type of affection I have toward you that not everybody will see that affection because they don't apply the wisdom to it. Uh, come on, anybody in this room? You know, I like what Proverbs 4 says. I think it's verse 7. It says, uh, uh, in all you're getting, get what? Wisdom. It says, because wisdom is the what? The principal thing. Wisdom is the what? It's the first thing. Instead of seeking riches, we ought to be seeking wisdom. Instead of seeking things of this world, we ought to be seeking wisdom. We ought to become more wise with the handling of our finances. How many can say amen? We ought to become more wise. We ought to become wiser. And, 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 and it, it's almost like wisdom is saying, take a hold of me, because when you take a hold of me, I take a hold of you. It says, if you seek me, you will find me. So wisdom says, I'm hiding, but I'm not hiding to the point where you can't search me out. If you search me out, you will find me. And guess what it says with this? It says this. It says this. It says this. It says, I love those who love me. It's amazing. That's amazing. And those who seek me diligently. So there's not just the seek, but this, there's that type of seek that's a diligent seek. And, 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 and many people that work hard understand that word diligence. Because in that word diligence, it doesn't mean things go good for you all the time. You will have opposition. You will have hard times. Things will come up, but you keep going. You keep going. And look what it says. Look what wisdom says. Riches and honor are what? Are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. Riches and honor are with who? With wisdom. Instead of seeking the riches and honor first, he says, love wisdom, and wisdom will produce. Yes. Y'all don't hear me. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> wisdom will produce riches, honor, wealth. See, we've got it backwards. We've been taught wrong. Not everybody, but some of us have. <laughs> because we're going after the things when at times we'll get things but don't know how to work the thing. That's why God can't give you money because you don't understand the concept of money. Money for some of y'all will kill you. Money, if you got a lot of money, it would destroy you. So before you get money, you need to get, you need to become wise. I mean, just ask, just ask some basketball player. I mean, come on, I know, I've heard, I know a guy, I'm not going to mention his name because I'm online. <laughs> but over his career, he made about $300 million, and today he has nothing to show for it. He made that amount of money in his career, and today there is nothing to show. Why? Because when he came up, he wasn't taught, or no one took him under his wings and said, listen, I've got to give you, how many know when you start getting money, everybody start looking for you? Everybody wants your, be your friend. Everybody likes you. But guess what? When you run out of it, everybody's gone. And sometimes some people just, some people kind of add to your life just to get what you got, but they really didn't like you. Are you here? They just came in because they heard you got money. Now you ain't got no money. You ain't no good. Let me just go and do my own thing. Anybody here? 
Come on. So, so why am I saying this? Because it, it, uh, to give or in giving, there's wisdom. There's wisdom in giving. And the Bible teaches that. Bible teaches about us giving. You, it would be good for you to give because there is rewards in your giving. And I just want to encourage you and challenge you today. You online, I want to encourage you that you want to give. It's wise to give. It's the right thing to give because the Bible says riches and honor and all these things follow wisdom. Wisdom has to be in the lead and everything else will follow. I believe God in these days coming are, are going to give folks some wisdom. Amen. Stop praying for money and start praying for wisdom. I said stop praying for riches and start praying for wisdom. Is anybody in here? Stop praying for a car if you can't even make a car payment. Amen. You better pray for wisdom first. Sometimes you got to pray before you even get into a financial situation because that thing can put you under. And then you're mad at them and they're just asking you for the money that they borrowed you. Y'all don't want to hear me today. <laughs> you get mad. Well, they calling me for the money. Well, that's their money. They borrowed it to you. <laughs> How you going to get mad when they borrowed it to you? They expect you to pay it on time. How many hear me today? All right, we love the Lord. Amen. Riches and honor are with me, with wisdom, enduring. In other words, riches that last and righteousness. I love that word righteousness because on the end of it, it makes clear, okay, whatever you're going to do, however you're going to get it, make sure you still live right. You got to live a right life. So I want everyone here, bow your head with me. We're going to pray and we're going to get ready to give. Uh, 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 and I'm going to have the usher. He's going to come forward and uh, he'll come down the aisle uh, and allow you to give. Father, thank you for every giver. You online, uh, want you to know that you can give online. There is in the comment box uh, where you can go, you can go to uh, GraceCityIndiana.com, and there you can give and there's many ways of giving so father we thank you for every giver we thank you for wisdom god wisdom god lord today uh, lord thank you for instructing us and teaching us according to your word lord your word says that you love those that love you and lord help us to become uh, 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 people of faith that want to become wiser. Lord, especially in these days. Lord, especially in these times. And Lord, I just make declarations over your people. I thank you for your favor. I thank you, Lord, for your blessing. I thank you for, Lord, your word says, as a result of wisdom, enduring riches. I thank you, Lord, for wealth and honor, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for those, God, that have been uh, sowing and planting and, and giving. Father, I thank you for increase and favor, favor on them in the name of Jesus. And Father, for them that operate in fear or maybe doubt has gripped their hearts, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would, uh, Lord, that they would try you. You said, prove me in this, said the Lord. Well, I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing that you are not able to handle. Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus and I pray favor, I pray your blessing, I pray increase. I pray, uh, Lord, just witty inventions. I pray ideas. Lord, what a season and a time to be in. Lord, that we can see, God, your creativity come forth in your people. Lord, we thank you for that, and I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and give online if you're giving online. Amen. And then I have an usher coming down the aisles here in the house. Glory to God. love you Lord today we love your word how many love the Lord here today amen you love God amen I just want to thank God for uh, the praise and worship team uh, you know just their commitment to the house and uh, Lord even during the time these last three months through the COVID-19 um, just uh, the grace of God on them and just the faithfulness and their faith and and being here and and providing you worship uh, you know, we believe uh, uh, that uh, in worship and in praising God. And you know what? God made it happen, right? God makes things like that happen. You know, uh, there was time, a moment I thought, Lord, how are we going to do this? And you know what? God always assures me, listen, you don't, you don't worry about that. I got that. 
I'm going to make this happen, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? God is able to make things happen in your life. When it, when it, when it, looks, when it looks difficult, when it looks impossible, I'm telling you from experience, I didn't know how things were going to set up. I don't know how things were going to get done. But God makes things happen, amen. And God is making things happen, happen in the lives of his people. Jocelyn, God's making something happening in your life. Don't, 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 um, hmm. don't, don't let anything steal away, Jocelyn, what God wants to add. The Lord's going to continue to add. He wants to add to you. He wants to give you. He wants to give you. But don't let the enemy come in and rob you of what God has already, listen, has already provided, already set up for you. One, one wrong move can deter you from that whole thing that God wants to do, can, can, can move you off that path. You know, I like what David says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Lord says, let my word become in this season a lamp to you. And, and, and now watch this. I know this to be true because what happens when we start going through things or dealing with things, instead of running to the word, we run from the word. We run away. What I mean is our relationship with the Lord doesn't, it, it's not as strong. And it's almost like we're just, we're just, just making it. It's just, I'm just cruising through this now. But he says, my word is a lamp to your feet. My word is a lamp, right? My word is a light for your path. Not anything else or anyone else. My word is a lamp for your feet, because you need to know where you're going. You need to know the direction in which you ought to take. And when we're out of the word, then we become unclear, it becomes blurry, right? I'm not so clear on the direction I'm to go. I'm not so clear on uh, the way God wants me to go. And what wipes away the, 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 the smudge or whatever that's that's causing the heart to see is the word of God. Is the word of God. Is the word of God. Is the word of God for me. It's the word of God for you, right? The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves Jocelyn. The Lord loves Jocelyn. He wants you to trust him. Trust me. It's easy to trust the Lord when everything is good. When blessings are flowing, when everything seems to be going right in our lives, but boy, it becomes hard when hell breaks loose. When God shuts the door, when God says, uh, you know what, I'm just going to put my finger here and I'm just going to create something. Well, well, no, Pastor, I thought it was the devil. No, no, I'm letting you know it was God. <laughs> it was God. I'm letting you know it was God. Because those are the moments, these are the times you might be online, that might have been for you, that you really find out, you know, where, you, where you're really solid at, where you're really footed at. Somehow, I let my guard down, I've, I've let my guard down, and when I've let my guard down, what I would at one time not accept, I'm now accepting it, right? I'm accepting some things that I would not have accepted before. Is anyone here? I mean, I mean, let's just be real. We've, been, we've all been there. Maybe you're there right now. We've let our guard down. And what we at one point would say, now, nah, uh-uh, that's not God, uh-uh. Now it's like, mm. Okay. Right? Okay, maybe, maybe this is, uh, <laughs> maybe this ain't bad after all, praise God. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? Let God direct you. Let God direct you. Let the Lord 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 direct, the Lord direct me. And where, however he directs you, in the direction of the Lord, he provides for you there. 
He says, I've already got what you need in my direction, not your direction. I've already got what you need. I've already opened up the path in my direction, not your direction. Right? Now, that may take some prayer. That may take some fasting. That may take some sitting before God and saying, okay, God, I heard what you said. Now, here I am. Here I am, right? Are you here? Is anybody here with me? Sometimes we jump, we move too quickly, and we don't give God the opportunity to move. We don't give God that, 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 that access to move. Because I tell you why, because a lot of times we already think we know God's number. We already know God. And when I know God, I don't need to hear God. We're not as quick to get into the presence of God because we're used to what God has done. I say has done, not what God is doing. Because God is doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing with me. He's doing a new thing with you. COVID-19 caused us to shift into a new thing. A new thing that we, don't, we quite don't have the understanding of yet. That's why he says, I light the path. I become the lamp for your feet. I light the path. What's the purpose of light? To find what's in your path so you won't stumble over it. You don't want to stumble, so you don't stumble. The purpose of light on a path is to see so you don't stumble over the things that's there. You hear me online? Anybody, anybody hear me here today? That, that's true. That's true. Offense can cause you to stumble, right? Hurt, pain, right? All those things can cause you to stumble. Uh, rejection can cause you to stumble. Um, um, I mean, just so many things. Strife, anger can cause you to stumble. Don't resist the light of God shining when he shines there. Whatever he's shining on, he's revealing, that's what you need to get rid of. And t I tell you this, on the other side, the blessing that God has will be much better. It will be joyful if you, if you can allow God to bring you there. And, and for, for some of us, that becomes the hardest thing, right? Is getting there. And we have our way of defining waiting. <laughs> but uh, how many know that God has a different uh, 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 definition on what it means to wait? Somebody say amen. amen. See, God... See, we have a definition of waiting, but complaining while we're waiting. <laughs> right? But God's definition of waiting is saying, I want you to rejoice and be in joy while you're waiting. Now, that's going to take some prayer there. because that, <laughs> that, 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 That's not always easy. Right? But the reason why we can do it is because of our expectancy is high. And usually, if we don't have an expectancy, then we won't wait. Because expectancy is what seals you or places you in that plate of, wait, of waiting. And you say, you know what, I'm not moving. I'm not moving because there's an expectation on the inside of me. There's something I'm believing God for. Y'all don't hear me here. There's something I am, I am believing God for. And just don't let the devil bring a counterfeit in your life. Because I believe that before the, the, the blessing comes, there's always a counterfeit. There's always what? A counterfeit. There's always a counterfeit. There's always a counterfeit. There's always a counterfeit. And that's the enemy's job to deter you or to move you away. Especially when you, you weren't pursuing anything or anyone and all of a sudden now you're being pursued. Right? You're, you're being looked at and you're being sought after. You know, where is that coming from? There's nothing wrong with being looked at and being sought after. But you just got to make sure that it's not the counterfeit. The only way you know something 
is counterfeit by knowing something that's real or something that's authentic or something that's genuine. You'll know in a moment what's counterfeit or fake or false because you always match it up to something that's true. Huh, something that's real. And see what our hearts desire is, you online, your desire should be, I want what's real, I want what's true, I want what's gonna, be, uh, what's gonna bless Christ in me. Right, because our lives, our goal, the goal of our lives is to bring glory to him, not ourselves. Let me say that again. The goal of our lives is not to bring glory to ourselves, but to bring glory to Christ. And if I'm not bringing glory to Christ, I've got to retract my steps or I've got to get back into prayer and say, what am I really doing and why am I doing this? If it's not bringing glory to Jesus, then I don't want to do this. The goal for us, the goal for you, that's been your pursuit since you've left masters, is to bring glory. It's to bring glory. Somehow something has taken you away. Little by little, we drift away from that point, that place, that place where we were. And it's because it turned from God to now turning toward me. Right? Turning toward us. Right? Isn't that right? That's true. That's true. Somehow it turned from God where before it was all about God. It was all about Jesus. It was all about the Lord. And somehow it's turned away from God. And now I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about uh, my life. I'm thinking about uh, I'm getting older. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about, oh, Lord, Jesus is coming. I don't want him to come yet. Especially for the couple that, or a person that want to get married. They're like, oh, don't come yet, Lord. <laughs> so is this about you or is this about Jesus? Woo. Come on, because he gets the glory out of it regardless. However, he's going to get the glory. He's supposed to get the glory. Here's, he's supposed to get the praise. Is anybody here? Listen, if I'm out to get the glory for my life, I've missed it. I've, I've missed it. I've fallen off. It's about, it's about Christ getting the glory. I want you to put up there John 10. Let's go here for a few moments. Let's go here for a few moments. St. John 10, 10. You can write this down. St. John 10, 10. <clears throat> And I believe that as the days go on, there's going to be a greater, um, a greater spirit that is going to be against God. Uh, in fact, the, the term is anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Christ. Anti-Christ is against Jesus. It's against God, right? And... You can see the spirit in a greater measure today than I think ever. And, this, and it's been around, this spirit, the Antichrist spirit, has been around since, since the book of Acts. That's how long it's been around. It's just become more, uh, more magnified. You can sense things are happening now. Right? It's the spirit that's against Christ. But you got to remember, this spirit is not only against Christ, but it's against anything that's connected to Christ. It's, it's against anything that, that wants Christ, that's pursuing Christ. So, so it's, it's not for us as believers, it, for in the day we're living in, it's not going to get any easier. It's not going to get, we're, we're saying, oh, it's going to straighten up. I'm believing that eventually this is going to all come. It might, it might. I'm not going to say it isn't. But what if it doesn't? What are you going to do? What if it doesn't get better? What if it doesn't come out uh, in, with, with the way we expect? Because again, as humans, as human nature, our, goal, our, our focus is, well, it's going to get better. And that's good to hope that way. It's okay to hope that way. But, but what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't happen? And we've got to be ready and we've got to have this understanding that if it doesn't happen, my focus, my heart, my trust is in God. But also I have to understand that even if what I was believing for, expecting for, it never happens, then that's okay because God's ultimate plan is better 
than my plan. Right? That God's what? God's ultimate plan. Right? And so, and so there is, there is um, a, 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 a antichrist, and that, that's against Christ, that's against God's church, that's against what God is trying to do. And we need to know, and our focus needs to be on bringing glory to God, because if we're not bringing glory to God, then we're bringing glory to the enemy. And can I tell you something? The devil wants your worship. The devil wants your worship. The enemy wants you, and, and, and I say this because of the day and time, because of many people, believers, the Bible says that there will be a falling away in the last days. There will be where they will turn completely away from God. They will, they will walk away from God. They will, they will turn from the Lord and they will start going the opposite of God. And they'll begin to say there is no God or God's never going to come or this is never going to happen. And that's coming from an antichrist spirit, amen. I want you to look at John 10.10 10 with me. It says this, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill, and to destroy. This is the words of Jesus. He says, but I have come that you, that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Keep going. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Now you need to know that today. You need to know that, my God, no matter what's happening, no matter what you're going through, Jesus is the good shepherd. Right? He's the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his, his life for the sheep. Go on. But a hireling or someone that is hired for the job, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The wolf, what? Catches the sheep and scatters them. Let's go back to verse 10. I want to say this. The devil wants to stop your worship of Jesus because he wants the glory for himself. The thief wants to destroy, steal, and kill. Now, how many have ever read this verse and said, well, you know what? And we usually... When you hear most people preach about this word, it's about the devil stealing something from you. Well, the devil ain't going to steal my joy, and he ain't going to steal my peace, and he ain't going to kill me. He's not going to destroy me. And that's true. But it's true because you're in Christ. It's true because Jesus truly is your shepherd. And when you understand the shepherd, that the shepherd is one who protects who guides, who leads. But in this particular passage, when you study the context, the devil was actually after Christ. He wanted to steal from Christ. He wanted to kill Christ. And he wanted to destroy him. Do you hear me? He wanted to wipe out Jesus because he knew that what Jesus was doing was going to impact the world. And you and I were going to be part of that. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen to me. A thief, let me just define what a thief is. A thief is one that takes that which does not belong to them. They will often try to acquire that which does not belong to them without being noticed. However, they will destroy things in order to get what they want and will even kill you to get that which doesn't belong to them. I want you to look at somebody and say, you don't belong to the devil, you belong to Jesus. Now I had you say that because that's true. Because the devil will make you think Jesus doesn't want you. The devil will make you think that what you're going through, God doesn't care about you. 
He's not a good shepherd because if he was a good shepherd, you wouldn't be going through that. Is anybody in here? He's not a good God because why are you facing that? Why didn't he answer your prayer? Why didn't he come through? The devil will try to steal your worship. He will try to steal you from Jesus. He will try to steal your confidence in God your faith in God he will try to steal your believing God where at one time you believed God the enemy will come in and try to take and steal he becomes a thief and how many know when a thief comes in he very rarely reveals himself he goes in he gets what he wants and he's gone is anybody in here? And see, and if you're not spiritually alert and spiritually where you need to be, the thief can be coming in and taking some stuff and you don't even know it. Is anybody in this room with me? In fact, some of your lives where you are now is a result is somehow you let your guard down. Somehow you've let down the prayer life, your time in the word. And the enemy, the thief, has come in. I'm speaking to somebody right now and has and tried to take away, take away you from Jesus. Take away from that place where you worship and you love God. I, I just got to be real with you. There's been those times even in my life where the challenge to read, I had to challenge myself and I've read through the Bible and prayed, but sometimes it just gets on you where you don't want to pray. Is anybody here? Oh, maybe that's just Pastor Calvin. All oh, y'all just pray every day. Y'all pray all the time. Y'all pray for hours. Right? But there's those times, man, you're like, I don't know. And I believe it's at them times, either we're being, being distracted by something else that's taking us away, or either we've allowed slothfulness to come into our lives. And most of the time, it's distractions. And I'm going to talk about that if I have the time. How many hear me in this room? Amen. So Satan or the devil. Now, I, I just want to say this too. That word thief not only refers to Satan or the devil, but it also refers to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You'd have to go back to chapter 9 and read in chapter 9 because Jesus is making reference to the Pharisees and the Sadducees when he healed this blind man and they had a problem with it. And instead of being a shepherd and leading the blind man, they in fact pushed him away. So when Jesus speaks about a thief, he's not only speaking about a, uh, the enemy, but he's also speaking about shepherds who are only hirelings that are in it for the money and not for pastoring the people. Do you hear me here? So we're not, the enemy is not so much objective. He's more of a, a, a tactical. He, it, there's a tactic with the enemy. Now let me tell you this. Let's identify the thief very quickly. I like what 1 Peter 5.8 says. 1 Peter 5.8, write this down. The Bible tells us, be sober, be vigilant. Watch this. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about what? Seeking whom he may what? Devour. That's true. That's true. But the scripture tells us to be sober. It means to have a clear mind. It means to be, it means to have a, a mind uh, where you're able to think. There's nothing so much occupying your mind. Be vigilant. It says because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, if we're not careful, we might have already come under or given in to that roar of the lion. We might have already allowed the lion, that devil, the lion, to roar where our walk with God is no longer where it should be because we weren't sober and we weren't vigilant. Is anybody in this room with me? And the Bible makes clear it makes clear, and I believe in these days that we're living in, I believe Satan is actually roaring much louder than he did maybe five, ten years ago. 
Why? Because his time is short. His time is short. And I believe the closer we get to the coming of Jesus, I also believe the, the more Satan turns up the heat. But can I tell you something? It doesn't matter how much he turn up the heat. God still got you covered. God still got your back. How many hear me in this room? No matter how much the enemy turns up the heat, it doesn't matter. Jesus, just like when he was in that furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and the big Nego, he is right there in your life right now. He's right there with you. And that same way that stench of the fire wasn't on them, same way the smell of the fire, same way the fire didn't touch them, the fire of the enemy, I declare, is not going to touch you. It's not going to come on you. Why? Because Jesus is right there with you. Is anybody in this room with me? But it's going to take you and I to be sober in village. You just can't talk about God being this and you not seeking him. You can't talk about how big God is and you've never experienced the goodness of God. You can't talk about what well, God's got my back when you ain't been even seeking the face of God. Does anybody hear me in this room today? Don't tell me these are the days that you've got to seek him in order to see him. You've got to seek him in order to find him. you got to go after him. Is anybody in this room with me? You ain't in the day where back 10, 15, 20 years ago, you could play church and you do church. We got a lot of folks doing church, but nobody in his face. And God's calling his church, God's calling a generation back in his face. Not his hand, not what he can give you. All the things that are in this world are perishing. They're going to come to nothing. And we're pursuing these things. We're pursuing these things. The Lord calls them in, in Matthew in, in 6. You seek after things. But you're not seeking my kingdom. And my righteousness. Because he said, in those, in seeking me, all those things, you know, I learned through COVID-19 that a lot of the things that I thought I needed, I really did need it. A lot of the things that I thought I could survive, that I needed, you know, like every weekend you go get a shirt, every weekend you go get a pair of shoes, every week, you re I realized COVID-19 just messed that all up. Is anybody in here? We get caught up with these things thinking I need this and I need this. All you need is his face. All you need is his presence. All you need and he will give you what you need. The Bible says Jesus said I already know what you need. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't, isn't that a good shepherd? Right? I, I already know what you need. I know what you need. I believe the needs in this season are going to turn. What you thought you need, you're not going to need no more. What you thought you would have need you, because a lot of times we thought we needed things. God says the need changed. It's now going to be more of a need for me. Uh, more of a need for my presence. More of a need for my face. It's going to be more of a need for my word. I don't know about you, but I said, Lord, I want to get hungry more for your word. I need more of your word. I, want, I have a need for the power of your spirit, God. I have a need for the power of your presence, God. How many have been finding themselves, and a lot of times if you're not careful, you'll try to provide for that need with things that can't provide for it. You use things to provide. You're thinking, why am I feeling this way? I'm feeling like I need this and I need that. And it's not that it's God saying, you need me, silly. Turn to me. Come on. Come on. You, the things that you thought you need, the things that you thought 10, 15 years ago you would have gone and got, you're going to realize and look and say, you know what? I really don't need that. What I need is more of God. What I need is more of the face of God. What I need is more of the presence of God. Anybody hear me here? 
What I need is more of his, his love. What I need is more of his compassion. What I, come on, come on, come on. What you've been going to the store trying to provide and trying to suffice, that greed on the inside of you, that greed, that's what it is. It's called greed. God says, I'm taking the greed and I'm going to give you a need for me. How many have a need for more of God? It's one thing to say, I need you, but it's another thing to say, I need you, and then go after him. Does anybody want to go after God? Is anybody in this room with me? Because the devil going to come. That spirit going to come. That demon going to come and tell you you need this. But you better know that you know that you know all I need is God. You better know deep down inside of you. All I need is Jesus. You better know that no matter what comes and what others get and what comes to others. I don't need all that I thought I need. But now I just need Jesus. All I need is Jesus. The enemy, the enemy wants you to, wants you to become more self-dependent than God-dependent. Right? We become more self, selfish or about us than there is about the Lord. And, and, and I'm just telling you, in the days, in the days that we're living in, we're going to see because of what we thought, and the need of this, and uh -uh, I just need more. I just need to make sure I'm ready for eternity. I need to make sure that my heart's right with my brother and my sister. Anybody here? I need to, I need to make sure that I, I'm loving people the way Christ loved people. How many have ever prayed and asked for that need, right? Oh, y'all don't hear me here. No, Pastor, but you don't understand. I have, I have a need. I know you do, and Jesus knows you do. But Jesus is saying, can you turn that need from that need and begin to take on my needs? There's a need for missionary work. There's a need for work in other communities. There's a need for work. Would you take on that need? Because there's a spirit, the enemy, the devil, the devil, Diablo, the devil. Satan, Satanas, Satan, that's coming after, I'm telling you, I'm, I was feeling this, and I, I'm feeling this thing in my spirit, I'm like, Lord, where's that drive, where's that hunger, and he's saying, I'm making you pursue me more, I want you to go after me more, I want you to get in my face more, I, but Lord, I'm feeling like this, yeah, 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 I know, because Calvin, I want you to go after me more, you're going to need me more in these days, Calvin, there's not anything else you need. You need me more. Oh, you don't need to do this. You don't need that. the things you thought you needed. I'm speaking to somebody because the devil's been lying to somebody. The devil wants your worship. He wants to take you from Jesus. Why do you think in the day we're living in, many are falling away? Those that we were saved, that got saved, that were with us, that were once working with us, that were once doing are no longer here. Somehow Satan has distracted them. And I love this story in John 10 because it talks about Jesus being a good shepherd. It talks about Jesus as the shepherd over his people, over his sheep. And how as a good shepherd, he lays his life down. He lays his life down for his sheep. Are you hearing me in this room? Satan wants your worship. Give me Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, let me just show you what Satan is after, what Satan is saying, his tactic. Let's expose the devil, the antichrist spirit in this day. Are you with me? Amen. Isaiah 14. I know that I didn't give it to you, but I just want to go there. There's a proud spirit. There's a rebellious spirit in the, in the land. There's a lawless spirit. Verse 13. Verse 13. There's a lawless spirit in the land. And the devil wants your worship. There's so many groups arising in these days that we're living in. So many, so many organizations that are rising. And they are not of God. The 
It's why you have to be careful with what you side with and who you side with. If you're going to side, you better do some research. Is anybody in this room with me? Because they'll say things in the name of the Lord, but is it in the name of the Lord? Is Jesus, is Jesus on this? Is Jesus agreeing with this? I don't care what others agree. I don't care what politics is Jesus. Look at Satan's tactic. This is Satan. This is who he is. For you have said in your heart, this is the enemy. God speaking about the enemy. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther side of the north. Go on. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. This is Satan's tactic. And to be like God, he's actually saying, I need to receive worship. And to not worship Jesus is to worship the enemy. That's why he was so after Christ. That's why he becomes a thief or a wolf. What is he after? He's after Jesus to take his sheep. Are you in this room with me? And we see he was prideful. Satan is after your worship. He's, and I don't mean worship in the sense when we do on Sundays and, and, uh, and uh, Tuesdays, uh, Wednesdays. I'm talking about worship as a lifestyle. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, see, y'all think I'm, well, ye, what, what do you mean, Pastor? I come in, I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what you, it's not what you do in here. What do you do when you get home tomorrow? I'm talking about a lifestyle. It's, it's not something that I just pretend to do. I get to church and I do. It's how I live now. Is anybody here with me? He's after you. So you, don't, you just don't find time to worship God. Here you got to find time to worship God in your house, in your car. You got to find time to worship God on your job. You got to find time to worship God. Is anyone here? Worship is a lifestyle. It's not what I do here because I can give you an impression that I worship God but be a devil throughout the week. Or live like the enemy. Your, your worship to God in the house in here is not impressing God. Because God's looking at who you are when you leave here. Who are you when no one's watching you? Who are you in your house when you're by yourself? Who are you? That gives a description of who you're really worshiping. How many hear me in this room? So what is the adversary? So let me just, I'm helping you out to expose the enemy. Satan wants the glory from Jesus. And we're heading to the day where the Bible teaches that the man of lawlessness, the Thessalonians calls him, that he will come on the rise. And you know what he's seeking for? Worship. In fact, this guy will come on the scene and he will have every answer for every situation. He will be so impressive when he speaks that the world will be like, oh my goodness, this is he. But the Bible says that he will only be like that for a season, a time, three and a half actually. And then from that point on, he turns. But he's after, he becomes, he becomes, he, he says, I'm going to be like God. That's that spirit that's still prevalent today. That's that spirit that's still operating today. It's only growing, getting greater. And we have to make sure that our worship to Jesus is a lifestyle and not something temporary. Amen. Not something fake. Does anybody hear me? See, worship is important to the individual and to the church. You know what the devil is telling people today? You don't need to go to church. You can watch online now. I've had some people tell me, Pastor, I don't need to go to church no more. I can watch online. Mm, I said, where did that spirit come from? That's a spirit right there. And they were sounding religious and so right. And I said, uh-uh, that's the devil speaking through you. Because the Bible says not forsaking. 
the assembly of the brethren. It says that we must come together. There's, a, there's something that happens when the church comes together in worship. As a matter of fact, both are powerless without worship. Watch this. If you don't worship as an individual throughout the week, there is no way you can truly worship on Sunday during a church service. Did you hear me? I'll tell you why. Why? Because worship is a lifestyle. It's not something that we just do on a Wednesday night. Worship, watch this, is how we bring in the presence of God. Worship is how we bring in the kingdom. Worship is how we release God into our midst, into our atmosphere, into the very place where we are. Psalms 22, verse 3, it says this, But thou art holy, O thou, who inhabits the praises of your people. There's something that happens when we begin to worship God. There is an inhabitation. There is a God coming in. There is when God breaks in and God begins to dwell and sit among his people. Where God begins to move in the aisle. Where God is saying, go ahead. Now I'm in here. Go ahead. Now I'm here. I'm, I want you to want me. I want you to want me. And something happens that you cannot get at home, that you cannot get in your car. I'm not saying that you can't enjoy God there. Yes, you can. The presence of God will fall there too. But there's something that happens when the saints, the people of God, gather together. And when we begin to worship God in one, core, one accord, in one praise, something happens when we begin to worship him. See, we take the scripture and give praise to God because God inhabits the praises. He inhabits my praise for us. We come into his presence and we worship him. Watch this. If we don't go into the presence of God, we cannot grow spiritually. In fact, we die spiritually. Check out most people that stay home from church. They won't tell you, but they're dying spiritually. If they keep staying home, the more you stay away from church and stay home, you become cold toward church. You become cardinal toward church, toward church people. You don't see the need anymore of being in church. You don't see the reason why you got to do all that prayer. Now you become critical about the church. Now you become critical about the things of God. Now you become critical about Pastor Calvin. Pastor Calvin always wants you to pray. Why does he always call me? Why does he want me in the church for? Is anybody in this room? See, when we come into the sanctuary to worship, we need to get our minds off all the stuff, the negativity, the things in life, and we need to focus on God. See, we need to understand that we can't worship God if our focus is everywhere but on God. Can I tell you something else? Some people told me, they told me, you know what, Pastor, I'm, uh, I, I got... I got you on online at home, but I'm, I'm cleaning my house. I say, you just like Mary. You just like Mary. You know, Mary was, or was it Martha, rather? It was Martha, I'm sorry. Martha was cleaning the house, and Jesus was in the house. I mean, the very one that you need to be focused in on and you clean out. Mary is sitting at his feet, but Martha is just busy. Oh, Lord, get that woman up. Tell her to come and help me. Come on, Lord. Tell her she's she lazy. She won't even help me. I had someone tell me, yeah, Pastor, I'm watching you online, but I'm cleaning my house at the same time. Oh, so what you're telling me is that you're only giving God half of your attention. So no wonder there's struggle and challenges in your house because you only give God half of your time. You don't give him all of your time. And, and it's only an hour of teaching or preaching, and yet you can't give him that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've had folks tell me, uh, uh, and, and no offense, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I'm telling the truth. They told me, hey, I'm cleaning my house, I'm doing it, I'm driving my car, I was on the phone, but I was watching you, Really? Well, first of all, you ain't watching me. It's not about me. I'm trying to give you something to help you get through the week. 
or, or whoever is. You know, that's just like Mary, but Jesus rebuked. Jesus rebuked Martha. Somebody say, yes, he did. He told her, listen, Martha, Martha, you worry about so many things. He said, but Mary has chosen the best place. Sitting at my feet, listening to my, my words. See, when we come into the sanctuary to worship, we need to get our minds off the stuff and negative things in life and concentrate, or rather focus on God. See, we need to understand that we can't worship God if our focus is on everything else. That'd be crazy for you to be watching the news and then try to go pray. <laughs> Un unless unless what, what you saw you're praying about. But most people don't do that. They watch it and then they get, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, it's getting higher. Oh, we're going to die. You ain't going to die, fool. You all right? Just keep looking to Jesus. And I'm not, I don't mean that in a mean way. I'm just, sometimes people be acting foolish. Jesus said this in Mark chapter 7, verse 6. He said unto them, well hath Isaiah or Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They honor me with what? Their lips. In other words, oh yeah, I love God. Oh yeah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. But you know what? Their heart is not engaged. Their heart's not connected. They don't have my heart and I don't have their heart. The heart must be focused on Jesus in worship. I also learned this, write this down. Worship equals receiving. Worship equals receiving. We don't worship to get stuff, but you get stuff based on worship. You hear me? We don't worship to get stuff, but we get stuff based upon our worship. Something happens. Worship is what brings revival. Wor I said what? Worship is what brings revival. Worship brings us into the presence of God. Worship with the power of the Holy Ghost produces breakthrough. It produces deliverance. It produces peace and victory. When we worship in spirit and in truth, we are preparing the way of the Lord. When his way is prepared, his steps, he steps into the service and does a great work in the lives of the people. And the devil, I said, and the devil cannot do anything. He can't do anything to stop when God's presence come in. He can't stop you from receiving the breakthrough, from being delivered, from being set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah from being cleansed, from being made whole, he can't stop you from getting the victory. Somebody better say praise the Lord. Somebody better say praise the Lord. I said somebody better say praise the Lord. Lift up your hands right there where you are and begin to worship him. Come on, worship him right there where you are. Lift up your voice and worship him. We're going to welcome in his presence right now. Oh, come on and begin to worship your God. Come on and begin to bless him. Come on and begin to magnify. Tell him that he is your victory. Tell him that he is your victory. Tell him that he's your helper. Tell him that he's your God. He's your Lord. He's your Say, I dare somebody to lift up the worship in this place. I mean a real worship. I mean that come from the inside of you I mean that comes from deep 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 down inside where you begin to let go and let God where you begin to worship him I dare somebody to let the devil know you're not gonna stop my worship I'm gonna give my worship to God I'm gonna bless God you need to let the enemy know you better back up off of me you're not coming in my way I'm not gonna work I dare somebody to lift up their voice and begin to worship their God I dare somebody begin to bless him because he is worthy of all the praise come on and worship him come on and worship him come on and worship him right there where you are I mean worship him I mean open up your mouth and give him worship 
come on he's worthy come on he's worthy come on some of you've been going through something some of you've been things i dare you begin to worship if you're at home online come on in your house begin to worship your god worship for your healing worship for the breakthrough come on you are that's this is not something new this is your lifestyle this is who you are this is not unusual hallelujah come on come on come on come on worship come on worship come on worship worship for direction worship for guidance worship for the lord to lead you come on i said worship close your eyes and worship your god come on worship come on worship come on worship your way out of that situation i dare you to worship i dare you to say devil you're not gonna keep holding me down you're not gonna keep stopping me i've given into your lie enough i've given into your lie enough i'm gonna give my god some worship i dare somebody to worship i dare you to worship worship like you ain't got no sense don't worry about your neighbor don't worry about what's happening i dare you to worship i dare you to live that worship Worship. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Worship. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. 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 Lift up those holy hands. Lift up those holy hands and worship. Worship your king. Worship your God. Tell pride you can't stop me. Tell arrogancy you can't stop me. Tell hurt you're not going to stop me. Say devil you're not going to stop me. I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship my way out of this mess. I worship for my deliverance. I thank you for my freedom. I thank you for my deliverance. I thank you that we are free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Thank you for liberation. Thank you for lick. Somebody go ahead and worship. We love you. We love you. Let the devil know. Jesus sits on the throne of my heart. Jesus sits on the throne of my heart. He rules. He governs my heart. Come on. Come on. Come on. Make a declaration. Make a declaration. Say, Jesus is Lord of my life. Jesus is the Savior of my life. Jesus is my God. I want you to say this with me. I want you to say it in the name of Jesus. I dethrone everything the enemy has tried to set up in my life. Say, you Antichrist spirit, you have no place. You have no right. You have no authority. Jesus is against you. Jesus is my good shepherd. Jesus is my savior. Jesus is my redeemer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my redeemer. Jesus is my rescuer. I dare somebody to tell them that he is your helper in time of trouble. I dare somebody to worship your God. Worship him. Worship him. Come on. Worship is your lifestyle. It's who you are. What if we believed it all? Worship him. What if we believed
You know, I wrote this. I feel the Lord. Listen to me. I wrote this. That's okay. I feel, I know he's here. I, but I wrote this. We can't allow the devil to bind our worship. Especially now when the world is in a perilous condition and Jesus is soon to return. We cannot, we cannot let the world or the enemy bind our worship. We've got to worship God. When things are good and things are, we've got to give God the praise. When you don't know what to do, you worship. Because if you don't worship Jesus, you will be worshiping the enemy. Something else will get your attention. Something will distract you. When you sit down and watch them ungodly programs, you're worshiping the enemy. When you're watching pornography, you're worshiping the enemy. Jesus said, thou shall have no other gods before me. Bow down and worship the Lord and him only. Whatever you look to, you kneel to, you bow to becomes your worship. If you need to repent, then say, Lord, forgive me. I repent, God, of putting other things before you. Lord, I put this, I put this program, I, I put Facebook before you. I bow down more to Facebook than I do you. I give more time to this than I do you. No wonder sports can't come back. No wonder all these things that we once were entertained by, they can't come back. They're having a hard time trying to make its way back. If this is the way God brings men in, then so be it. Remove all sports. And that nothing other than God gets the glory. Now let me end it with this. The, the devil went to Jesus and said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Have you ever read that? Satan had the nerve to go to God and tell God to bow to him. You see how hungry he is for worship? If he can go to God and tell God to bow, how much more are you? Because he knows you're not even where God was, where Jesus was. But yet he, he even tried Jesus. I'll give you all this. That's in Matthew 4, 9, I believe it is. Put it up there and I'm, I'm done. Matthew 4, 9. He tells the Lord this. And Jesus told him, thou shalt not tempt me. He says, I bow down only to the living God. Is it up there? Thank you, Lord, for your freedom. Yes, your place is in worship. Your deliverance, your healing, your victory is in worship. Your revival is in worship. Hey, your coming alive is in worship. Uh-huh, look at this, look at this. Oh, and he said to him, this is the enemy. I'm telling you, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. There is a spirit today that is asking, that demonic spirit saying fall down and worship me. Look what Jesus said, next verse. Then Jesus said to him, away with you. What's the answer to getting the devil off of you? You tell him, get off me. Back off. Satan, I rebuke you. You don't give in and say, oh, well, not today. No. Jesus gives us an example. Away, Satan, for it is written. And then what does he do? He uses the word. That was found in Deuteronomy. That scripture is in Deuteronomy. He says this, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Notice that Jesus didn't give in to Satan. 
I mean the nerve of the devil to offer God what already belongs to God. But that just shows me how despicable he is and deceitful he is. That he would do that. And how much more you and I. That's why we've got to be just like Jesus. I worship God and God only. I bow down to God and God only. Now God help me get in that place. Here's your prayer tomorrow. Here's your prayer when you work up. Wake up, Lord, as I get in your word, help me, Lord, to worship, to follow after your heart. I don't want the world. I've been distracted by a lot of things, but, Lord, I need you. Father, give me the grace. Give me what Jesus had. I always pray that. Jesus was able to resist. Give me that. You know, the Bible says in James, submit unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What does it say first, though? Submit. Submit. Jesus was under submission to God. That's why the devil fleed from him. Well, Father, we love you. Every head bowed. We're going to get ready to go. Lord, you're already working and moving in the hearts of your people today. Even those online, Father, thank you for touching and speaking and moving. Thank you for your presence. Lord, that is so powerful here right now. Lord, we want this word, God, not to fall on shallow ground, but we want it to take depth, God. We want it to go in, God. Lord, where it becomes living, living to us, God. So I'm asking, God, for your people today, Father, that you would engraft now the word. Lord, if anything I, I've said, Lord, that they would receive it. And, Lord, that they'd become part of them. Lord, that they'd go back tomorrow and they would meditate. And, Lord, that they would know for sure that Jesus is a good shepherd. And Jesus deserves our worship. And Jesus deserves our praise. Father, I'm asking that you would strengthen your people. Father, that you would keep them. We thank you for this day and what you've done. Thank you for your presence Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak blessing. I cancel every curse. I speak increase. I speak, Lord, your presence. I speak the blessing of the Lord over them. Father, even as they leave this place, and I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for speaking. Lord, in getting us and helping us become all that you planned and designed us to be. Father, I thank you for your people. I pray all this now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise.